In this video tutorial, we're going to explore the visualization of symmetrical components through this web application app here. And the way that this is set up is that you have this input, which is your system phasers. And if you can just imagine that the red phaser is phase A current, the yellow phaser is phase B current, and the blue phaser is phase C current, and all three phasers were rotating in the counterclockwise direction, we have an ABC phase sequence. And not only that, but we have a balanced system. So when we have a balanced system, our positive sequence component is going to be identical to our system phasers. But our negative sequence component, our zero sequence component are both going to be zero. Okay, so for a balanced system, we should only have our positive sequence component and it should look exactly like our system phasers. Now, what would happen if we change our system phasers? Would we get the same result? Well, let's see. Let's make our system, which is a balanced system, into an unbalanced system, which means we could either change the magnitude of one of the phases or we change the angle. So let's just pick up phase A and we change the magnitude. And then guess what? As soon as we change the magnitude and angle of phasor A current, we see that the positive sequence component changes, but at the same time, we also have a negative sequence component and a zero sequence component. Now, let's look at some of the characteristics of the decomposition of the unbalanced system. And remember, the decomposition is just a fancy word of saying the symmetrical components of the unbalanced system which is these guys right here, okay? Well, first of all, we said that a system was an ABC phase rotation or phase sequence, right? Well, let's look at our positive sequence component. Well, a positive sequence component is also an ABC phase sequence, but our negative sequence component is the opposite phase sequence of our system sequence. So our negative sequence component would be an ACB phase sequence, which we see here. And our zero sequence component, well, it has no phase sequence. And in here, it doesn't actually show all three phasers. But if you can just imagine that all three phasers are overlapping each other and it has the same angles, so this right here would be just our zero sequence component. Okay, so as we continue to move our phasers, we see that the sequence component they all change to match this to decompose the unbalance of our system now let's put it back to where it was before which was a balanced system now let's look at a different perspective now i've superimposed the symmetrical components in our system phasers directly and look at the characteristics of symmetrical components that way. Because this is a balanced system, we would only get positive sequence component and positive sequence component would look exactly like our balanced system. Okay, now as soon as we change phase A current, look what happens. Now we get a decomposition of symmetrical components which means that we get symmetrical components that equal our system unbalance, right? So in the previous tutorial, we said that this was phase A positive sequence component, right? This was phase A negative sequence component. And this right here was phase A zero sequence component. Now let's try to look at some of the characteristics of this example. So we know that for a positive sequence component, it should have the same phase sequence as our system phasers, right? And you can see here, this three phasers are our positive sequence components. So this is positive sequence component for phase A current. This is positive sequence component for phase B current. And this here is positive sequence component for phase C current. Now, for negative sequence component, this is our negative sequence component for phase A current. This here is our negative sequence component for phase B current. And then this here, this line here, is our negative sequence component for phase C current. Now you would have to imagine them being at the same origin to see how the phase sequence of negative sequence component changes. Now before we separate that out and actually see how it looks like, let's analyze our zero sequence components. Now in our previous tutorial, we said that our zero sequence component should have no phase sequence, right? 
and it has the same magnitude for a b and c but the zero sequence components are all overlapping each other so in here we see that this right here is our zero sequence component for phase A current, right? Now we should see a similar phaser for phase B and phase C zero sequence component, right? So we see that over here. This right here is our zero sequence phase C component. And you can see that it has the same magnitude as our phase A zero sequence component, right? And they look like they will overlap each other if they were on the same axis, okay? And then here, you see this one right here? that is our zero sequence component for phase c current and it has the same magnitude and it looks like it will overlap phase a and phase b zero sequence component so now let's let's uh, separate these out and see how the sequence components look like about its own axes okay now here they are again now we've separated out and as you can see our zero sequence components do in fact overlap each other and it has this magnitude and this angle and our negative sequence component you can see that it's a balanced system right what are the characteristics of the balanced system well, we said that the magnitude of the phasers are going to be exactly the same, which they are. And then we also said that the angle displacement between each phase is 120 degrees. So if you take this angle here and you subtract this angle there, you're going to get 120 degrees. So we know that negative sequence component is a balanced set. Okay. And our positive sequence component is also a balanced set because the magnitude of all phasers is the same and it's they are displaced by 120 degrees so if we keep on moving this around you see that our symmetrical components actually change based off of the unbalance of the system okay and then let's put it back to where it was let's let's put it back to a balanced system okay i hope that this example provided an intuitive perspective of symmetrical components in the next part we'll actually calculate positive sequence component negative sequence component zero sequence component based off of the magnitude and angle of our system phasers now you'll find the url of this particular web application below this video so take a look at that, play with it, and get try to get an intuitive feel for how symmetrical components actually work, and grasp the idea that it's only decomposing the unbalance in our system. Okay, so I'm going to repeat one more time what symmetrical components are doing. It's taking the unbalanced system that we have, right, this unbalanced system, and it's creating balanced set of three components, okay? Um, and technically zero sequence component is not a balanced set, but it's creating a balanced set of components. The positive sequence component is a balanced set, all right? The negative sequence component is also a balanced set. The zero sequence component, not sure if we can call it a balanced set, but the idea is that this balanced set of phasers represent the unbalance of the system. And we could use this information to describe how our system is reacting or use this information to set relays and breakers and so forth. Again, if you have any questions, there's going to be a forum link on the bottom of this video. Please go ahead and ask your questions on that forum. And if you haven't subscribed already, please go ahead and click on the bottom right corner of the screen. There is a subscribe button. Thank you. This video was brought to you by GeneralPack.com.